we still see a number of patients, Christina, who have um, what we call smoldering myeloma or early stage that traditionally we haven't treated, but there are um, a number of abstracts being presented at the ASH 27 meeting where treating smoldering myeloma early has been explored. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And particularly if, if you can describe some of the work that's being presented here. Uh, I think it's very interesting, actually. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, earlier on, uh, the first concept of treatment of this population of patients was slowing down the progression and maybe treating them suboptimally. What we see now, a new current, maybe if we intervene sooner and more aggressively, we can impact on this patient, we can impact on the survival of these patients. And I, I, I think it makes sense. Uh, less tumor burden, going aggressively, achieve, uh, achieving a deeper response. So uh, I don't necessarily uh, yet say that we should treat all the smoldering myeloma, but I think the high risk, uh, it makes sense, particularly with uh, the study of Dr. Uh, Mateos, uh, very early, very premature, uh, where uh, she almost did the total therapy for these patients, uh, KRD, transplant, consolidation, and then maintenance. And we do have a short follow-up, and all patients completed the regimen. But we see a, an enormous amount of patients achieving MRD. And if that will translate in survival advantage, it's going to be very important. So I think it's, it's an important message uh, for uh, patients uh, with so if you're early a, disease. If you're a community oncologist watching yeah. this, should they be treating smoldering myeloma or just waiting a bit longer till we get better, longer follow up on these? I, I would like to see longer follow up, particularly, uh, and I would like to see you know more data, clinical tri trials, uh, because I'm concerned about the toxicity in these patients with uh, an aggressive approach with the KRD. Actually, I was surprised that. It was re relatively manageable, but you know you have to take that in account. So, let me ask, but, uh, sorry, uh, you know. let me ask Nupur, what do you think about treating smoldering myeloma in, in light of these new studies? A pretty aggressive treatment regimen for people who are asymptomatic with some risks of toxicity. What, what do you think? Certainly agree with what has been said, but I do want to highlight the fact that we've redefined smoldering myeloma a little bit. We've redefined, in fact, what is symptomatic multiple myeloma, and you have the slim crab criteria now, wherein you have you better uh, describe greater for than, people what so that that's is. more than 60% plasmacytosis in the bone marrow, uh, better imaging modalities so that uh, in the slim criteria we've, we've included MRI, if you have more than two focal lesions in an MRI, it does not have to be only an MRI. It could be a PET CT scan or a CT scan. So if you see bone disease on that, and the last one is the serum-free light chain ratio. If you have a ratio of more than 100, these in fact become symptomatic active myeloma patients and should be treated actively. The teaching even today, despite this very uh, encouraging data at this meeting, I think should be that smoldering myeloma is a patient population which is wait and watch. And until we see more mature data, I don't think we would suggest treating these yeah, patients. That would be my bias to uh, Harry what do you think I completely agree outside of a clinical trial I don't think we should be treating smoldering myeloma right. the highest of the high-risk patients as Nupur just mentioned have been moved up into symptomatic myeloma now so the remaining people should only be treated on a clinical trial I was sort of struck in one of the abstracts that when they screened what they thought was smoldering myeloma but 35 percent of them had uh, bone disease yeah. if you look hard enough